Hi, and welcome to a special edition of Two Minute Warning. I'm your host, Perry Busby, and my co-host is none other than the publisher of the West Side Gazette, Mr. Bobby Henry. Bobby, how you doing tonight, my brother? Perry, as always, I hope to say I'm terrific and getting better. It's a, it's a, it's a process, and I want to continue to go through that process. I'm well, man. How you doing, my brother? Man, I am doing well. Uh, mm-hmm excited uh we into a new year this is our first broadcast and this is a special broadcast uh no doubt so uh if that says anything about 2022 then man we're gonna have a heck of a year ahead hey you know there's some stuff going on man aside from the everyday, <laughs> the everyday shooting and killing of people uh the pandemic everybody's getting touched by it Thank God it's, it's not as uh, deadly, uh, well, well yeah. for those who are vaccinated. And, uh, well, even the ones who, who didn't get vaccinated, it's, they're not, it's not as deadly, thank God, but it's right. still a nuisance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It has uh, crippled some schools, mm. uh, hospitals, uh, and even just uh, some of the, our ordinary uh, services. Uh, mm-hmm. COVID is showing that uh, despite what we say, it can impact our economy, our homes, our way of living, whenever it gets ready. It, it, it does, man. And I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, Perry, but, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fearful, fearful, I'll say that. But, but what concerns me is, is how do we begin to, uh, rearrange our lives from from what we are accustomed to doing and and how do we do that without endangering uh life as we know it man i i, I and I, I attended church for the first time in almost two years uh, on first sunday and mm-hmm. it, it 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 was it was it was an eerie feeling you know uh, even though we were safe uh, we practiced COVID guidelines to the T. I mean, you know, there was enough space. There was people coming in one direction, another going in another direction, but it was all orchestrated. But it it was just an eerie feeling to me in the house of the Lord, uh, you know, in the church, you know, uh, it, it just felt different, man. And all I could think about was, or is, is this, is this the new way of living? You know, and, and and the short answer is yes. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and, and 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 we're all uh, sort of struggling with that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and you're right. I mean, we we've got to uh, not just ask what is normal. But but how do how do we create that? And I you know, and I think that for the first time, I, I mean, we, you know, we we lived through the last five six years maybe of always hearing things saying this is unprecedented. Mm-hmm. Well, now we are in an unprecedented time, I think, for us, and we have to start really making. Uh, some decisions and asking ourselves some tough questions that go along with this unprecedented time. Yeah. Yeah, man. Did, did, did you, did you see where uh, in Colorado in the middle in winter, um, yeah. hurricane winds blowing fire, man, what kind of stuff is that? I mean, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be chicken little. You know, right. nor, nor, nor do I want to be, you know, uh, but, but, uh, hey, man, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but, you know, that's why we created the two minute warning mm-hmm. again to touch on these issues that when we 
begin to see them that we just don't call normal plays hmm. or go about life as as normal. And I think that that's, you know, um, I was on a podcast last night back home. Uh, and uh, we you were. You want to have a podcast? And, and <laughs> well, yeah. And as a matter no of fact, and, and as a matter of fact, you know, we talked about that, about how podcasts can come together. Mm-hmm. And we want to try to attempt to do that this year about, you know, just coming together, some podcasters. Mm -hmm. And let's just expand it among our networks. I mean, we have got to start thinking about just doing things just differently and not thinking about it as being so local as well. I mean, you know, because one uh, again, as I was telling them back in Texas, some of the same things they're talking about change the name, change a few things. And it's the same thing here. Hmm. What they say, SSDD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. That's all. You know. Hello, Miss Dixie. I see one of our viewers just chimed in. Hello, Miss Dixie. Good evening. Great hey. to see you. Hey, Perry. This, this, <clears throat> this. I was also reading about uh, uh, babies who are born during the pandemic seem to be showing signs of uh, uh, a lingering effect in that their cognizance is, is, is kind of slow to developing. Uh, and I think that that may be just one of the few things that we will begin to find. Mm. You know, uh, we've been, you know, we've been so busy fighting either getting vaccinated or, mm. or, or how to just, you know, govern ourselves with this. Uh, so much to the point that I, I I don't think that much has been, well, and I know I won't say uh, not much has been given, but we have not yet reached a point where we began to look at what life means after COVID. Mm. Mm. You know, or or, or what this means. I mean, I, I mean, what does it mean for a person who's had COVID one time Versus a person who's had it three times. Is there any difference? Hmm. If you just if you're asymptomatic versus if you know, I mean, I I, I don't know. I I can only vouch for myself. I do know, you know, at the onset of having COVID, uh, for a, for at least a month or two, maybe even three months. I know I did, uh. I, I had to cope with, with, with brain fog, and some may say, well, maybe I'm still coping with it now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, I'm just saying, but I'm just saying, you know, brain fog is a part of it. It's one of the known symptoms. But I think, I think we're going we're gonna to find a whole lot of these things uh, that we're having to live with and cope with. Yeah. Well, what about this maladaptive uh, behavior towards each other? You know, I mean, as as if COVID wasn't enough. You know, there there's there's, there's what some may uh, uh, call senseless senseless killings and shootings, uh, bodies being found in canals, and uh, people running over children, and you know, just mayhem all over the all over the place, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Blame it on the COVID. And we're blaming on the COVID. <laughs> but I ain't getting people blaming yeah. on the COVID. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I think COVID may play a part of it. Mm-hmm. And again, just being a tech guy, I think tech plays a lot, a lot into this. When you say tech, now give, give me, give, give us, give us uh, people an understanding of that. Mm-hmm. Because technology, I mean, although technology connects us, mm-hmm. technology, I mean, with technology, you can also be anonymous and darn near invisible and 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 conduct your life in a world that others don't see you know and so i think we i think we're kind of seeing some of the psychosis of you know of Mm. of this on our on, on our uh society 
And especially when it comes to, uh, I know there's been a lot of talking, and I hope we're going to do a, uh, some shows on that this year, is to talk about uh, what what impact does it have on minorities uh, as we move to these more automated systems. Mm. You know, I mean, you know, we laughed about going to oh, on the Jetsons, you'd go to a judge and the judge was some voiceless computer. Yeah. Well, I mean, could that be possible? Is that possible? I mean, we're already talking about autonomous delivery and all of these other things. And there, I mean, and there is already a system in the court system that helps judges uh, determine points. You, you know, I can remember as, as, as when I was younger, uh, you know, when I was still getting paddled, if you will, in, in school. So I'm saying, you know, man, why, why, don't, why don't I create a machine that could apply a certain amount of pressure based upon a certain <laughs> amount of weight? And I said, yeah, man, I can do that. So it wouldn't be no. But then I said, hell, somebody got the program. And if that person, <laughs> if that person who's programming it is biased toward a person of right. color, you about to get your behind yeah. <laughs> you know, but with saying that though, you know, but saying that though, Bobby, uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about these elements. What it does, I, I think, uh, highlight is the fact that that uh, as they said in the Bible, don't don't for, don't forsake the assembling of the saints. I, I, I don't think that we can discount what it means not to gather and not come, you know, and not be together in those moments. So, yeah. you know, so I, I, I think we're seeing a lot of that. Okay. You know, but, you know, and I, and I, and I was listening to something before we, we, we came on and I just thought I might. Oh, oh, I <laughs> you took us to church. Yeah. We're gonna need some church tonight with this conversation. Well, what brings us to what brings us together tonight on this on this uh yeah. for a special night? What brings yeah. us together? Well, you know, we we we, we call this, this the, the topic of discussion tonight is black folk disenfranchising black folk. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, know, you know, people may ask me, "What are you, what are you talking about, man? What, the, what, you know, what does that mean?" And 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 and, and, and as you and I were were discussing with what as we were discussing this, and I say, Perry, I'm gonna lean to you for your uh, uh, election proudness, if you will, and and your 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 worry with all to that. But when we have in our community, and I miss conversations being had. From supposed to be intelligent people saying, damn, man, I don't even know if I want to vote. You know, when we have conversations like that and, and we begin to try to understand where is that coming from? How do we get to this point? You know, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to precipitate uh, this, this thought process, this whole ideology about now not voting? You know, what are we doing? as a people to discourage uh, uh, our people when it comes to voting? Um, that's an interesting question. And, and uh, you know, I guess I'm coming into 2022 with a lot of questions and I hope they're just simple questions. I'm not, you know, but that's one of them. Uh, as, as you and I have discussed, we are the direct descendants of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Mm -hmm. We were those. We were those children, teenagers. Uh, I mean, and there's something to be said for how we've handled a precious gift. And we got to be honest with ourselves about it. 
And and so we and so the questions that I have first, those questions begin to start with myself before I can ask anybody else. I've got to ask myself, have I done everything I could? Mm -hmm. Have I not? You know, and so I mean, and then from there, and I know you and I have talked about this, but I think that we've got to ask ourselves some serious questions. Uh because I'm not sure how much we, even if we can quantify it in terms of percentage points, uh, but much of voting rights as we as we once knew it, if 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 Republicans take over this election in 2022, we can begin to we 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 can pretty much start waving bye bye. Okay, now, Perry, you brought, you, you brought up a point. <clears throat> I, I was reading an article about, you know, how did uh, Broward County become, well, Florida in general, become so blue, you know, and, 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 and this particular person, uh, from their standpoint, they were analyzing how this process began to happen. And just to cut to the chase, uh, what I gleaned from that article was the fact that there was some underhanded undermining stuff going on by the by, by, by the leadership of those different organizations uh the, the florida republican party and broward uh, uh, uh republican whatever that brc whatever that is and, and it was saying that there was some stuff being done that could send people to jail you know suppressing mm -hmm. votes and some other tactics now mm -hmm. you talked about if the republicans you know Let's look at what 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 was just on Facebook. What was just happening in Pompano, you know, with uh, what's the gentleman name who's running for for office, the Republican guy? Oh, Mr. Mariner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 the activities that were surrounding the E. Pat Larkins uh, Community Center, uh, uh, a staunch Democratic, black Democratic stronghold precinct, you know, and 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 some of the stuff that was going on there. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know. So, I mean, uh, and I, I well, I mean, and you know, Bob, and, and, and I, I, I could be wrong mm -hmm. on this, but I guess my attitude, and my attitude on this is, I, I, I'm not so much as focused on what they're doing because what they're doing shows that they at least put forth a plan and an effort. Could that we be? have no response. We have no. I mean, we 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 respond, but we had we had no idea to put forth an effort to do something. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and so you know, they they kept carving out voting rights when they found out the first time that they could carve them out, and there was no response. Then they cut them out again in 2013, and I'm just saying, I if I could just be so honest, I, I I I'm not one of these people that's holding out hope to see Congress do something or to see the Senate do something. Why? I, I mean, you. I would love it if they did, but I can't put my hope on that, and I can't put my hope on doing everything to protest them to make them do right. Okay. Okay. When do we understand or realize that that what what uh, 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 what we may not see is the plan that they have put into action to actually keep us, you know, uh, uh, if you will, going at each other, you know, uh, 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 belittling each other, lying on each other, you know, uh, what? What is it that's preventing us from seeing that that may be a part of their plan? Another suppressive voter plan. You know, yeah. Well, I, I don't know if their voter plan had anything about the black elected, the rival black elected officials not meeting. Mm. Well, now, so well, tell me. More, say that one more time. I need to understand. I don't mean. know what any of that had to do with Broward black elected officials not meeting mm -hmm. and okay. having a strategy. Mm hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. stopped them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's maybe, see. maybe we should have pushed them, and maybe we should have known that hey, we needed to push our leaders to meet. But nothing wasn't stopping them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Republicans was meeting. Democrats was meeting. Me. Democrats, but you know, well, I mean, you know, I mean, Democrats and, oh, and them. Yep, them like, De- Democrat, them yeah. Democrats was yeah, meeting, yeah, yeah, and, and we was happy to come whoever made it to that to that meeting, but we mm-hmm. didn't meet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I, you know, and folk can argue with me about it, but show there should be proof that we met, that we had a plan, that we had an agenda. The fact that now we voting to try to replace three seats. Then got two replaced and none of them won. I mean, tell me, okay, tell me your plan. Tell me your plan failed, or did you fail to plan? Good point. Now, 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 this, 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 this whole scenario, this whole, this whole thing is 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 uh, going back. You know, go, going going back to like you you all you said that we don't count in terms of. We don't know our voters, you know. We're not. We're, we're, we're not. We're not canvassing our, our, our areas, you know. We're just taking for granted, and 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 this was evident. And I know y'all, if y'all there listening, I know y'all saying, "Man, why y'all beating a dead horse?" And 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 in the LC, uh, Mr. Hastings Congressional uh, District, you know, because that's the largest Black Democratic district in the country, and we had such a dismal turnout. Of voters, you know that's why. And, you know, and currently is at eight point two percent. And up, if man. you think, and if you think that eight point two percent guarantees that Sheila, uh, McCormick is going to win, not 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 when you got some precincts where none of the people voted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I don't know if anyone really understands this, but Mr. Marin and I, and we were going to have, I, I was hoping we would have him on, but uh, Ms. Marin does not even live in District 20 because it's not a requirement that you live mm-hmm. within a district. Mm-hmm. Okay, that goes back to a part of that plan, Terry. That, yeah. That, you know, you know and, and, and it, 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 I still, well, we're, we're, we're moving past that. We got a special election tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we wrote a piece. You and I wrote a piece about the signs. You know the 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 you know I, black people. Yes, we need to have conversations where we can have conversations at. We need to talk. We 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 should be talking every chance we get from the streets. To the legislators, we need to talk. We're not doing it, you know. So those of you who are running for office right now, uh, those who you who refuse to come on the show, for those of you who refuse to do any kind of publicity or advertising in any black media, to, to those of you who want to reach some constituencies and you're doing it in, in some abnormal way, then are you really concerned about the people who you want? your votes from I, I just need to understand that and and you don't block our calls I, I, I should have called your name out that's what I should do I should have called your name when we call you to ask you something and then you in turn block our numbers so you don't have to answer that call what is that saying about you holding office are you going to block people call who disagree with you you know maybe I should have called names you, you know, you tell me, I don't want to be like everybody else. You know, and, you know, and I, I say that because we have to understand that our children are looking at us. Yes. And I don't care what you say. Children see what you do. As, as Again, as going back to uh, James Baldwin, how can I believe what you say when I see what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and how can you care about your community when you leave old campaign signs out and they become piles of garbage in the neighborhood? How, how, how do you do that? Right. How do you not go back and clean up your mess? 
you know, we, we, we got some serious uh, yeah. conversation needed. And, and, and yes, we hope that, you know, the black elected officials will, 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 will come back and, and be strong as they were at one time and have meetings that would invite the public to come in. And God dog it, don't blame it on the COVID. Don't do that. Don't blame it on the COVID. Don't blame it. Don't say you can't meet because of COVID. You know, let, let's not do that. Let's get to where we need to be, where we need to have these conversations, these real conversations. Not because you don't like me or I don't like yeah. you. You know, Perry, help me out now before I start, you know. Me. <laughs> well, now let's bring our guests on who can help us. Is he in there? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come okay. on, let's 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 bring him on. So okay, cool. Let me let me let me introduce this this gentleman. Pat, you back there? <clears throat> okay. While while he's coming on, Pat is a Pat Bryan is a journalist. Uh, he he's been in the struggle for a long time. He's a singer. He's an urban and and uh, he's an urban regional planner. Uh, he's a community organizer. He's about seventy four years old. And he's been around with some of the, 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 the real pioneers of the struggle. As a matter of fact, he was mentored by Reverend Fred Shuttleworth. Now, if y'all know anything about Brother Shuttleworth, you 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 know his activism. And uh, uh, John Reverend John Bryant, Reverend C.T. Vivian, these are some of the people that he was in close contact with. As a matter of fact, when Dr. Benjamin Shavis was a part of the Wilmington Ten. And was incarcerated in prison. Uh, Brother Pat Bryant wrote articles to assist in getting him and the others out of prison. So this brother has been around in the struggle for a long time. So if he's back there, can we bring Brother Pat Bryant on? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Uh, I haven't been around that long now. <laughs> <laughs> I it sound like I was. Around with <laughs> Frederick Douglass. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to be on the West Side Gazette's, uh, what is it, two minutes and two, two minute, minute warning. warning. Two minute warning. We need that. We need that. And you, you, you ask, you, you're dealing with some serious issues, which we have to uh, come to grips with. We have to have dialogue in our communities. I mean, dialogue is one of the things that we had in the 60s. You know, we had dialogue in the 50s. We had dialogue and action, and we tried to reach a consensus, a united community that moves forward is one in which the leadership in those communities have talked to each other and have come up with a consensus on how to move. That's the plan, Perry, you, you've been talking about. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough dialogue mm -hmm. to create a plan. Mm -hmm. And that's not a healthy situation because right. uh, I was encouraged. I learned a lot of things as a young one. Uh, that I'll never forget. One was how much dialogue takes place among real leaders. I may have a position. You may have a position. But we need to bring those positions together mm -hmm. and look at the whole body politic. And uh, uh, I applaud you for this program. This is a way of coming together. Uh, I just got out of a, a Zoom meeting uh, with leaders in Louisiana who were talking about some serious issues, but the key leaders were there sitting around the table. Nobody, you know, the, the, the dialogue has to be so effective that any good leader will be embarrassed not to be there. Mm -hmm. And I think you can do that here. Mm -hmm. I think you have you you have the moxie, you have the creativity, you have 
to convene of what it takes to 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 message. If you can do this, you cut out the influence of the big influences. Uh, the big influences are always media. Mm-hmm. If you build your power and how people move and act, then they lose power. Let me make that carry that a little bit to another place. I've been supporting politics all of my adult life. I registered people to vote when I was about 13 years old. And we won in Raleigh, North Carolina. We, we won a seat for our first black councilman. And that was because we knocked on doors, we talked to people, we got their advice, and they helped us put a candidate in that we all agreed on. They helped us put him in office, and we didn't have any television support. We did have radio support, but we had the support of black newspapers, radio, and tell another black person. We don't. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're not. We're not as effective at talking to each other as we used to be. We, so a lot of the money in politics, you, you gotta follow the money now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the money in politics come from people who have special interests and want a special thing done and want you to dance to their music. And so, they, Per, people who are elected are often conflicted by the money that they have in their campaigns. And we need to give more money to, to people we're going to vote for, like Val Demons. I just pulled out uh, uh, my checkbook and I sent $100. That's all I could afford, but if I could afford more, I would have. She was asking for fifteen dollars. We got to support our people. Uh, unless we support our people, we solidify mm -hmm. the money that Marco Rubio gets from whomever wants to control us. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, brothers are. Uh, I think we're at a point where we need to go back to some of the things we used to do. Mm -hmm. A high priority in that, a high priority is somebody has to create a vehicle. It might not be the West Side Gazette, mm -hmm. but somebody needs to create a vehicle for us, for our leaders. Now, when I say leaders, I'm not talking about just elected people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the people who folk in our community to go to when they got a problem. That's a leader. Leaders serve. And we have to put a premium on service. If somebody comes up to me asking me to support them for office, I want to know what they've done. Who did you serve? Is that an unreasonable question? And then we have to, to, to look at that service through independent eyes. There used to be a publisher of a newspaper in, in, in North Carolina. I tell this story often. Lewis Austin ran, was a founder and of the uh, Carolina Times newspaper in Durham. Now, Durham is a special city, unlike any in the country, mm -hmm. where 
in the 20s and 30s, black businesses were strong. Black people did business with black people. In, you know, black banks, black insurance companies, black, 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 black. <laughs> you you couldn't <laughs> you couldn't get your I mean, you had a black cleaners, you had a black grocery store. And Lewis Austin made it stronger by taking the flashlight. He would announce that he was going to look for a leader at a certain company, like North Carolina Mutual Insurance Company. And he would show up with a flashlight on a certain day that he'd already he'd already announced when he was coming. And Lewis Austin would get the leaders in those businesses and those organizations to tell him about their leadership, about their service. And that was published in the newspaper. My God. Mm -hmm. My God, what they're talking. It was controversial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody was reading the paper. Mm -hmm. Mel lost you for a yeah. second. You know, I I, I find myself um, um, out of admiration, uh, speechless when when truth is being spoken that we can mm -hmm. use to move on. Uh, and I know I'm not the only one who uh, becomes emotionally charged and 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 want to engage our mouths <clears throat> before our brain has a chance to settle our heart if you will so yeah. so so when i was going on about what was happening in our neighborhood and perry this is this is one of the reasons that you and i chose to bring brother pat on because mm -hmm. of the wisdom that we need we need organizers man who know right you know i mean young folk i mean that's fine that's energy but if you don't have the where it's all uh in in the marks uh the stars, uh you know then then yeah and I, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, man. I, I, I'm not yeah. always. I, I know that. No, and and, and um, I mean, like Pat, I, I I always say I've been involved in politics since the age of six. Um, but as as I'm sure Mr. Bryant can attest, as you can attest, one of the struggles, and I think that. Hopefully we can do that in this iteration is is the young people have always, you know, we've always had that internal struggle between the young people coming in with their vigor, their enthusiasm and, and the older saying that I have this wisdom, but really they're trying to say, no, you can't push me too fast. And how do we balance that now? Because it is moving at such a rate that we can't wait some time. Mm -hmm. And we <laughs> need to listen to that. And we need to try to balance that. But, but as Mr. Bryant says, that begins with communication. Because I can't trust you if we've never talked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know and, 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 and I want to, I, I really want to, I, I, I want to bring it back home. To these special elections tomorrow you know we have a chance to, to start over for at least a few months you know and and maybe it's fortunate enough that some of y'all only gonna be in the seat for a little while anyway you know maybe that's fortunate maybe that gives us <laughs> an opportunity or a chance to say okay right. let's, you, know, let's, let's, you know let's move on from this you know yeah you know so 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 but but in yeah. terms of those, those those young folk and i'm gonna call you out jody uh, Daryl and Elijah, you know, you have an opportunity uh, uh, to do something. But but if you go in if you go into it with the same uh, attitude and the same poison that you have been injected with or that you believe, and you're not you're not talking to your your, your elders, uh, then, then then you're doing you're doing more damage than 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 than, than we need. You know, we, it, we we shouldn't continue to put new wine and old skins it don't mm. work 
you know, so 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 in order for us to communicate to begin that process, that means we got to break some ground, man. And in yeah. breaking ground, it sparks fly sometimes, but that doesn't mean anything. All that means is that you're sincere about what you're doing, you know. But anyway, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a back up for a minute and, and get back to Pat, the organizer. You know, uh, brother, we need we we this 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 is this is. Uh, uh, a new era where we need some wisdom. Yeah. That's that's good counseling, and we we need to offer more counseling. Is that we? Am I talking? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Mm -hmm. We hear you. Uh. We, we, we need to encourage people to vote every election. We need to encourage people to find out. If you don't know anything about somebody, call somebody and ask them. If the newspaper, you know, uh, that you get every day doesn't tell people, doesn't give you enough sense about what's going on, talk to somebody. You need to be you have confidence in. I get calls all the time. People ask me, what about this guy? What about this woman? We have to uh, uh, get on top of our game with that. Now, oh, Pat, there's oh, a oh. song sung by... Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait. Uh, there's there's a song. There's a song sung by uh, uh, a group out of Selma, Alabama. These are young kids singing, and the song is "Vote for Me Until I Can." Mm. Lawyer, doctor, preacher, man, vote for me until I can. And mm. we need to. I I will I will call the people who produce that. We need to, to, in this special year, we need to play that all the time across Florida. That needs to be something that everybody hears. And there's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of things we can do to get people tuned in to, to, to the drama. This is, this year, 2022, is going to be, or is, the most important year in Florida's history for us. It's the most important year in the history of this country. In two, in, in two states, we have the potential to pick up two senators. Huh? Mm -hmm. to put to put uh, the Democrats in power to get around uh, uh, mansion and the rest of who are playing games we've got to to put the spotlight on the drama that's happening right now in front of our eyes mm -hmm. Rubio Rubio and 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 DeSantis they they telling us to kiss their butts, mm -hmm. and we're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pat, you got to pay attention to this, mm -hmm. and we got to pay attention to to the election tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We got to get out, off, get up off our butts. If we don't know who to vote for, call somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, call somebody and find out who to vote for, and take mm -hmm. your little paper in, in into that voting booth and pull that lever. Mm -hmm. You're not voting just for yourself. The young kids are saying, vote for me until I can. Lawyer, doctor, preacher man. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what I was going to, I was, hmm, I was trying to thought. I was, you said that we need to talk to each other. You know, even if we, are running against each other. We need to talk to each other. 
And and those of you who are listening, you 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 know that there's some poison uh, being spewed, some things being said, you know, and 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 hurt people hurt, and 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 we are hurting people, you know, we are we are suffering, uh, we are we are uh, uh, just trying to to live day to day, and I know, and I can only speak for me when my mouth engages before my brain does my heart means something well and 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 we just need to take a moment when we say stuff we need to realize that we're all god's children and we need to take a moment and just realize that this political aspiration it's not your livelihood. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if that's your life and you're willing to do anything to, to get there, please take a, a close look at who you're willing to hurt. Yeah. Because who you're willing to hurt might not be the person you're going to hurt. Yeah. And we need to take a look at that. Yeah. So. You know, and, and again, I, I've said that I started, you know, this by looking at the man in the mirror because um we've only experienced this political growth in the last 50 years with holding i mean this the number of office seats and the things and so you know and with that comes the expectation that we know how to handle it but in reality, I mean, it's showing that we 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 are fumbling this, and I mean, it's showing our it's showing our amateurish approach to this, and that and and I believe that that's okay, and that's where we have to have voices like Mr. Brian and you, Bobby, who can help calibrate us again. Because, you know, the times of, uh, of the Barbara Jordans, we are not in those times. Those times served us and they served us well. They got us here. But now we have to ask ourselves, what is the leadership of the future? Hmm. And I don't think that we can look at a leadership of a future <laughs> by not being real with some of the old mistakes and making sure that we that 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 we make sure that that we don't lose hold of what is most valuable to this process and 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 so you know i i, I kind of look at this and I, you know sometimes I, I mean i'm ready to cuss in a minute but i have to realize there is no other group who has advanced like black folk have. And, uh, uh, but I do want to say something about it. I did see someone, I, I did see a, uh, I want to say Roderick Kemp. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Roderick Kemp is one of the candidates in the congressional, uh, in the U.S., I mean, I'm sorry, in the state uh, representative race for uh, the 94th district. So mm -hmm. uh, just did want to acknowledge him. I've never met him, but I did see his name. And I, I believe that's him. Yeah, I, he pointed out, he was saying, uh, when, when Brother Pat was talking, he was saying that it was wisdom. Right, and, right. And you're right, Brother Kim, yeah. going to take wisdom. And I right. see we got Reverend Wayne Lomax. You know, Great. Uh, my, dad, my daddy used to call Reverend Lomax the black angel. You know, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Reverend. I mean, these are soldiers now. Now, 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 now. Right. Now, now I'm telling y'all. Well, I'm getting. I'm telling you, we have some soldiers here, and if we were to meet, and Reverend Lomax, you know, you know, we need to pull. We need to pull this together, and 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 let's do what we need to do. Yeah. I did see yeah. Ian Richards. Uh, Ian Richards was a candidate for judge. I wasn't sitting judge, so so thank you for watching. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, man. We we are <coughs> brothers and sisters and people who care. 
this this is a this is the time yeah. for us to come together whatever what whatever yeah. our aches may be whatever uh, uh malice we may have toward one another i would say bury it tell me come see me or call me if you if you're afraid of me and tell me by the <coughs> phone you know if that's yeah. the case but don't lie to me or lie on yeah. me yeah. But but I will say this though, and, and uh, you, you know, in turn, in, in terms of communication and and making sure that we have dialogue, um, I know much is said about social media, and we all push to go there. But uh, with social media comes misinformation, disinformation and blocked information because as i always tell people if they know what information that feeds you they also know what information to keep from you to keep you uneducated and to that point too Perry, if you put it out there, you it out there on social media and you realize that man i, I spoke too fast yeah you know, it's hard to go back and get it you know yeah you, yeah it's extremely hard you don't you don't yeah went across the asphalt on a motorcycle and that asphalt has grabbed your skin right. and pulled it all the way off and you it's hard to yeah. put that skin back on yeah yeah but see we run to that because we say that's where the masses are but in running to that we don't own that content and it gets blocked again and so you know there's been a lot of talk about how do we own our own content the black press has been our own platform. Hmm. You know, we've got to we've got to reimagine how it's delivered to us because if we want a message that's to us and true to us, then we we can't we we can't keep that hostage to some other platform. Mm-hmm. When the black press with folk folk knew, you know that when I got my paper, when I got my West Side Gazette in in in, in 1973 and 1972, 71, they began to know this was a paper that was for me. Mm-hmm. And now we got folk run to the Sun Centennial, want to tell the Sun Centennial black folk business as if the Sun Centennial really cared. Yeah, that that for 195 years, the black press has been alive. Right. And, and I mean, I use this point to 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 say that uh, uh, January the, the 19th through the 21st, uh, the the National Newspaper Publishers Association will be at the Hollywood Diplomat, uh, and 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 doing for our midwinter conference. Um, opening night is the chairman's reception that's that's a wednesday night and you're welcome to come out you're welcome to come out and meet some of the black publishers from across the country and and just to hear what they have to say the same struggles uh, some of the same things we're faced with uh here they're faced with all across the country and then we got uh some of our homegrown people uh opening up the conference you know to, to to create an atmosphere of healing if you will you know, and, and, and we got a panel discussion on mental health led by some of our very own, our public defender, Gordon Weeks, uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, drug counselors, Mr. Guy Willard, uh, one of our community activists, Mona Lisa Weber, and another evangelist and community activist, Miss Anna Henry. You know, so these are people from the area participating in this conference. Uh, and, and we're going to have a good time. You know, uh, one of the special guests is Stephanie Mills, and and that's on Friday night. And I'll save the other part about that that that. Part. <laughs> so, so, but but yeah, you know, so come out and support support the back press. Yeah. You know, and learn something about it. Um, mm. I don't know, people. We 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 got to come together. You know, we do. We got we to. And and, yeah. and 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 if we are truly God's children, uh, then we admit when we you know uh made a mistake or admit when we uh, have hurt uh and and let's move on 
because it's about the people. Mm -hmm. It's not about us. I don't want to do my, my editorializing right now. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But but no, I, I, I agree. And uh I mean to all as we begin to wrap wrap up for tonight, to all of the candidates, uh wish you the best. And uh to those who and I know that uh really tomorrow there will only be one um uh the race for the uh congressional district will be final tomorrow. Uh, but in terms of the uh, Senate race and the congressional race, uh, those were primary races, although in uh, the in, in, in the 94th, that's a uh, universal primary. So uh, whoever wins tomorrow for that will also be the winner uh, in the state uh, seat for Bobby DeBosis. Uh, see, uh, <clears throat> wish, wish you all well, but more than anything, I, I, I hope that the eventual winners will take advantage of the time and serve. Mm -hmm. Get to know this community if you want to represent it. Learn how to serve it. Mm -hmm. Pat, Pat we're, we're wrapping up. If you can take a minute to, to close this out, to give us some some um, inspirational wisdom uh, in this whole political landscape, this whole uh, point of serving. You know, uh, All of the problems that we have can be solved through service. Mm -hmm. All of them. Mm -hmm. COVID. The pandemic, we can solve this through our service. Mm -hmm. Hmm. We can mask, we can social distance, we can not get into super, super spreading events. We can elect people to serve us well. Mm -hmm. We have got to get focused on serving the people. That's why pe people don't want to come out because they're not being serviced. So let us pledge to go into the communities and knock on doors and get people out and promise them that we will serve you from now on. That's all we have to do. Yep. If your rent's not paid, let, let us serve you. Mm -hmm. If your water bill, if your water is too high, let us serve you. If the kids are having problems in school, let us serve you. Mm -hmm. Right. But and that's and and look, that's what Kara Meeks did. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was a wonderful leader. I met her during the Liberty, uh, Liberty City. What do you call it? Insurrection, mm -hmm. 1981. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. call it right. I call it an insurrection. insurrection. Okay. <laughs> People got tired. Mm -hmm. People got tired of carrying buckets of crap. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's no, 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 no. But she, I, 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 and I met her, and she had people all around her who were needing help and giving help. That's what we need today. Okay. So let's okay. let's elect to those people that we elect. Let's get about him and, and, and work them. Yeah. Okay. Very well. I want to do this. I want to close out with this. Now. Just a and I've been dental. Oh, we do oh, anything. Wrong time, time, wrong time, wrong time, wrong time. Hold on, bear with me. <laughs> I just want to close out with this and I want you to pay attention. And this poem is called The Bridge Builder. An old man going along highway came in the evening, cold and gray, to a chasm vast, both deep and wide, through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim, 
the swollen stream was a knot to him. But he stopped when he sat on the farther side and built a bridge to span the tide. Oh man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength and labor here. Your journey will end with the closing day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build you this bridge at evening tide? The laborer lifts his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I have come, he said. There follows after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm, which has been not to me, to that young man may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. So what this says to me is not about us, but it's about those who come behind us so those of you who are running to hold office, make sure that you understand that it's not for you, but it's for those who come behind you. So I wanna say thank you, Pat Bryant, for all the wisdom you gave us tonight. And Perry, thank you for kicking me in my knee to tell me to keep my mouth quiet when I'm supposed to. And to all of those of you out there listening, Ms. Meredith McCleary, I see you. God bless y'all. Thank you very much. Go out and vote. But please, vote, please. Vote for the one whose service is needed and willing to serve. Good night, all, and God bless. Good night.